Ryan asks, After reading this week's coursework, I was interested in checking out the Blockchain Explorer on Blockchain.com. I saw a mining pool named F2 Pool quite often, and I noticed that on October 3rd, 2019, they mined 18 blocks. Is it fair to assume then that this pool alone potentially made a gross profit of $1.8 million in one day, not including transaction fees? What are the economics of these pools? How much of that 1.8 million is potentially profit? Well, um, it depends. It depends on the electricity cost, operational cost, and hardware cost of the miners who are participating. Now, keep in mind, and this is really, really important: mining pools are not miners. Miners are the people with the hardware. Mining pools are the coordinators who uh, help the miners collaborate so they can smooth out their earnings. So it's not the mining pool that mines these things. It's actually the miners who participate in that pool who mined uh, these blocks. And how much of that 1.8 million was profit? We don't know. The profit ranges between uh, zero in many cases. Some of these are not profitable. Uh, and in some cases, up to 30 percent um, or more when uh, the cost of electricity is low, the price of Bitcoin is high, the hash rate of a specific miner is high, and they are able to get lots and lots of blocks, and even more so when the transaction fees are high. So the profit margin depends on all of these factors, which are highly, highly individualized. Different miners have different profit margins and operating costs, which actually is a great way for the system to dynamically balance. Ryan asks, Given the race by both users with fees and miners with hashing, is it possible that some wallets secretly working with certain pools can send transactions directly to the mempool of those mining pools first, or a few seconds before everybody else, and give them a slight edge to build an ideal block or create uh, higher fees? Uh, yes. This is in fact possible, uh, not just possible, it has happened. There are times in the network where miners have uh, created their own transactions uh, with elevated fees, injected them into the mempool of various mining pools that they are well connected to, uh, where they get propagated very, very fast, uh, causing the mempool to have lots of high fee transactions. Uh, and then uh, that causes all of the other users who want to put in transactions to elevate their fees. Um, now, this is a strategy that is very risky. If a miner that is constructing these in collaboration with uh, some wallet that they've built to do this, to jam high fee transactions into the mempool in order to elevate the prices, if that miner isn't actually mining those transactions, Effectively, they're spending these fees and paying the other miner that ended up mining these transactions. So this strategy only works for miners who have a very high percentage of the hash rate, so they can recoup some of the fees they're spending trying to jam the market. Of course, if all miners are doing this and they do this kind of collusion, then what happens is that fees can be elevated. However, keep in mind, from a game theory perspective, if you are one of the miners and you notice all of your colleagues are jamming transactions with high fees into the mempool to drive up fees, what you can do is sit back, not pay a thing, and let them drive up fees while you just earn them by mining, and you are not risking these transactions that might be mined by someone else, which means that you make as much money as they make per your hashing power uh, from the higher fees, but you are not spending money to create these higher fees. Well, if you think about it, if everybody do, does that, then nobody is willing to take the risk of creating the high fee transactions, um, because those would benefit all of the other miners, and they'd be taking on all of the costs. It's a classic tragedy of the commons scenario, and in this particular case, it works the benefit of users because this only works if there is a lot of collusion between a lot of miners who have a lot of hash power during a time when fees are already high and there's some kind of political fight going on, which is why this happened mostly in the summer preceding the hard fork 
um, of Bitcoin Cash and the huge debate over scaling, where people wanted to make a point about how full the system was. Now, it may happen from time to time again, uh, but it is a risky strategy for miners that they can only pull off when there is a lot of collusion, and where miners can easily reap all the benefit and pay none of the costs by taking advantage of that. So it is a, a losing strategy most of the time.